Hey, today I'm going to show you guys how I make jalapeno poppers uh, on my smoker. I have a custom rack that I uh, designed a long time ago uh, when I used to cook a lot more poppers and do some catering and barbecue events and stuff like that, and it holds 77 of them. Uh, I had it made out of 12-gauge steel. It's a really easy thing to do if you want to go to your local steel yard, anybody that has a CNC plasma cutter for steel, which many steel shops have those now, and kind of show them this video or show them what's in it, I'm sure they can draw one up and have one cut for you really easily if you want a larger one like this. Otherwise, they're also, you know, popper racks are available on Amazon and things like that. Um, I'm going to show you how I make poppers. I'm a purist when it comes to jalapeno poppers. I like cream cheese uh, inside a jalapeno with a little bit of bacon wrapped around the top, not too much and not thick cut of bacon because I like the bacon to be completely rendered out and crispy. And I like the flesh of the pepper to be really soft and completely done. Those are two things that are really important to me when I'm making poppers. So I'll show you, uh, how I do those and we're going to do it on my big uh, trailer smoker. So let's get the video going here. I'm going to cook these over um, oak today, and I'm starting my fire like I normally do, which is uh, by using paper towels that have uh, cooking oil saturated into them. I use used cooking oil that I've deep fried things in. And I'm going to build a little log cabin style wood fire in this guy and get him going and let him let the smoker get going at least an hour to an hour and a half to where I've got a huge bed of coals because we're going to be smoke roasting today at 325 degrees so I need a big fire and of course I haven't done this in a few times so I'm going to go ahead and coat the outside of this firebox with pan release which is vegetable oil uh, when we do that when we coat this firebox with vegetable oil like this that oil gets so hot that it burns and when vegetable oil burns it polymerizes turns it into almost a plastic coating uh, that, that's really good to keep that keep that uh, smoker from rusting and keeps it semi waterproof also. That's why you see me do that every few times I barbecue. Now I'm going to clean my grill grates off with a nice poly brush and then spray them down with oil and wipe them down. Even though I'm not cooking directly on the grates today, I like to get them good and seasoned. And then this is my popper rack and I'll go ahead and do the same thing with it. Just oil it all up and wipe it down and then let it come up to a high temperature in there and, and sanitize while we're getting these poppers ready. Like I said, you can have one of those racks made at any steel shop. They should be able to handle that no problem, and they're not very expensive at all. So here's how I make them. I like to go ahead and chop the top off, and to get that core out of the inside, you can use one of these pepper cores. They're, they're made for jalapenos, uh, but if you have a vegetable peeler, it's shaped about the same. That's what I used to use. It cuts the inside of it out, or you can use like a butter knife or a tomato core or you know just get creative uh, but you'll see the vegetable peeler works really well if that's what you have at the house right now and don't want to buy anything else see how it just scoops it all out and it pulls that core out of there so i've, I've done that many times but I'm, today I'm, in the interest of time i am going to use my jalapeno core because it fits it perfectly and it takes it out really fast has those nice serrations on the side uh, and that's what i'll be doing these since we're doing 77 poppers uh, i can make quick work of it by uh, by using this this jalapeno core that I bought. I think they're still available online at a number of places, so it shouldn't be too hard to find one of those if you're interested. So we're making a bunch of these today. Um, so I'm using the fast forward option on this software, of course, because there's just so many. It takes it takes about an hour and a half to prep for me to prep 77 poppers. Um, it's just, just a lot of steps. But if you're just doing a dozen or so, it's uh, it's not that big a deal. You can also cut poppers in half and cook them in the oven. There's a lot of ways to do these. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there. I'm just showing the way I do it in this popper rack. So the next step is the messy one, which is filling them with cream cheese. Uh, a pound of cream cheese, or we'll block, I'm sorry, a block of cream cheese this size. I don't know if it's 12 or 16. I don't know how many ounces it is. Uh, but anyway, it does about 12 to 14 peppers. Now, these peppers I'm doing using today are fairly large. If you're growing them at home or buying smaller ones, it'll use less cream cheese, of course. But just use your pinky finger and kind of stuff it down in there and then leave a headspace at the top there, about a half inch if you can, because cream cheese does expand whenever it gets warm when it's cooking. 
you'll know this if you ever cooked a, a, a cheesecake and they expand as they're cooking it. And if they, if they uh, fall or contract too fast, that's when you get cracks in your cheesecake. Because that cream cheese does weird stuff when it gets hot and it puffs up. So I like to leave some headspace so it doesn't crawl up out of the pepper when it's cooking. So just, it's messy, but just uh, stuff these peppers full of cream cheese and leave some headspace. And, uh, and then we'll go on to the, to the next step. Like I say, I don't put any adjuncts in here. A lot of people put cooked sausage or bacon bits, chives, ranch dressing mix, all kinds of stuff. I like them, um, I like them just like this though. So that's why I'm showing you how to, how I do these today. But there's a lot of ways you can get creative with the filling that goes in a popper. Then I buy cheap bacon because we're going to be smoking it anyway. Uh, the subtleties of a flavored bacon probably wouldn't come through. And I do not buy thick cut bacon. I buy go ahead and buy normal thin bacon. Uh, the reason for that is we want that bacon to render completely out. And if it's thick bacon, you have a hard time doing that and not overcooking the popper or the cream cheese or the rest of the the rest of the piece. I like to take them all out one by one and, and lay them on the cutting board like this so they come to room temperature. That way that bacon stretches better and it's easier to wrap on the peppers. Uh, as you'll see, this very first one is still a little cool. They'll wrap just fine when they're refrigerated, uh, straight out of the refrigerator rather. Uh, but it's just a little nicer whenever they get more pliable by reaching room temperature. That's why I stack all that bacon out there like that. And then I just wrap it around the top two thirds of the popper and stick a toothpick through it. That's all I do. I like, to, I like there to be bare pepper at the bottom that gets nice and charred and cooked well, uh, exposed to the air, and then the bacon around the top two thirds like that. That's the way I like to do it. And I don't, I do not ever use a whole piece of bacon. To me, it's just impossible to render it out cooking in this method. And you get that chewy bacon, and I do not like that at all. I'm fairly opinionated when it comes to how to do these. But this is how I do it. There's a hundred ways to cook poppers. I just wanted to show you guys uh, how I've done it for many years now. And again, I like to lay that bacon out and let it reach room temperature so that it becomes more pliable and stretchy and it'll wrap around that popper a lot easier. These don't take very long to cook. We're going to smoke them at 325 to 350 degrees. If you can keep your pit at that temperature, it's great. We're going to do a smoke roast. Take about 45 minutes. And I do use a, a, an internal thermometer on these, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, because I figured out that 205 degrees internal temperature is exactly what we're looking for, uh, where the flesh of that pepper will be nice and soft and bite through, and the bacon will be completely rendered out. Um, of course, the cream cheese is just going to get warm. It doesn't matter what temperature it, it, it hits. So there's our 77 poppers ready to go on our popper rack. Got the smoker up to temperature. And we'll just put these on there one by one, and then I will season the top of them with a little bit of barbecue spice. I'm going to use Payne County Rust, but um, I do like to put a little bit of bar barbecue seasoning on the top of the cream cheese. Uh, it's very easy to do. adds a little bit of flavor. makes them look better, as you'll see here in a moment. There they are all loaded up, and then I'm going to sprinkle some Payne County Rust across the top, and then we will shut the lid on this thing for, like I say, it usually takes about 45 minutes to get to that 205 degree mark, and that's, that's how long it took today. I like to put a probe in the biggest popper. I'll go through the flesh of the side of the flesh of the pepper and then go into the center. That kind of holds it there, and I, I use the largest one just because I don't want the bigger ones to be undone or, or more raw than the rest. And then I'm looking for 205 degrees, and it took about 45 minutes. Like I said, it doesn't take very long. Uh, the, the smoker did a good job holding 325 all day long. It took quite a bit of wood, but on a winter day like this, it's January here in Oklahoma. And there they are when they're all done. You'll notice the bacon is rendered out. I can push a, a toothpick right through those the, the flesh of that pepper so it's bite through. And you can see the cream cheese is expanded to fill that head space on those poppers. And the bacon is completely crisped. That's exactly the way I like them uh, to be done. I can tell they're done at that point. 
So we'll take them inside and put them on a tray now. And that's really all there is to these. They're ready to eat right away, of course, but I like to let them rest because they'll melt your face off right now with that whole full of that burning hot cream cheese. But these are really easy to make. I kind of went crazy today making 77, but I wanted to show you how, how many you could make out of a popper rack like this. So that's what they look like when they're done. Um, I really hope you guys try these. They're, they're really simple. Like I said, there's, there's not much to them, and there's a lot of different ways you can cook these. You can cook them in the oven like I talked about earlier. You can cut that popper right in half and put cream cheese in the half, kind of like a, an oyster or a mussel shell would be, and then wrap bacon around that, put them in the oven, and cook them. Uh, I don't know how long it would take. You'll have to experiment with that, but this is how I cook them, and I've done this way for years. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.